This is not just a list of vitamins and minerals to take because they're immune boosting. No, this is about a chain reaction that occurs with each and every vital nutrient and mineral along that process. Okay, you require one mineral for the function of another vitamin and vice versa, and then they get depleted. So anyhow, you have to understand this root cause of your immune system. You have to understand it, and we're gonna break it down very simply with four very critical vitamins and minerals that are all involved for each other. Make sure you do hit that red subscribe button because we got daily videos coming out. And then I want you to hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you never ever miss a beat, our live broadcast, or our daily videos. And a huge shout out to Perfect Keto. So there's a link down below. They've sponsored this video, but the cool thing is right now during these kind of wild times, they've made it possible for people to get their hands on some really good pantry staples. So they've got some good low carb, low sugar, no sugar options for you to stock your pantry with at a special discount. And they're also making this channel possible right now through this pretty chaotic time. So big thank you to you, Perfect Keto, and make sure you check them out for special pricing on some cookies, on some collagen, on some bars, all things low carb, low sugar related. So check them out after you watch this video. Okay, let's start with vitamin C, which has been quite honestly talked about a lot right now. So I won't spend a ton of time on it, but I'll give you the basic gist of it. Our immune cells have little pumps on the membrane, on the outside of them, that pump in vitamin C when we are in need. Our immune cells don't use vitamin C unless they get called upon, unless they get activated. And when they do get activated, boy, do they get activated because they can absorb literally a hundred times the vitamin C content that's in our blood plasma level. So they just soak up all that vitamin C like crazy. That's why when you get sick or when you're stressed out, your vitamin C levels in your blood plummet because your immune cells just soak them up immediately. So they're basically like a fuel for your immune cells. Now what we have to remember too is the more ferocious the specific immune cell, the more vitamin C it needs. For example, if you have a cell that's right on the front lines that's really designed to go and neutralize an attacker, it's gonna use more vitamin C. It's more powerful, it's a bigger monster, so it takes in more vitamin C, right? That's the interesting thing. And so if it's a more powerful virus, your body's gonna demand more vitamin C. It's really plain and simple. So when you're stressed or when you're tired or, or, or immunocompromised, your cells are requiring a little bit more vitamin C. So that's why it's more important to take a decent amount of it. I usually recommend that you kind of use your own guidelines there. Personally, I take anywhere north of 5,000 milligrams per day, but that's just me. Now, what's really important to know is that vitamin C fuels your immune cells, but your immune cells are useless without vitamin D. This is where you have to pay close, close attention. Vitamin D is what mobilizes our immune cells. I want you to think of this for one second. The immune cells travel through the bloodstream and they identify a pathogen. Let's say they see a virus. So they see the virus and then they stick out a little antenna. And then antenna is a vitamin D receptor. So it's kind of like this. The reconnaissance soldier goes out, he finds an enemy, and then he hides behind a rock and pops open his little comm unit and he calls in for backup via vitamin D. But if you don't have vitamin D, nothing ever gets activated. He's not able to reach the immune system. So this happens a lot if we're deficient in vitamin D, whereas the immune system begins to notify that there's an attacker, but there's no vitamin D to actually complete the signal. So without vitamin D, immune cells remain naive. They never truly mobilize. So at that point, what good is vitamin C? If vitamin C only fuels immune cells that are mobilized, really, without vitamin D, vitamin C is kind of useless. And then it gets even more complicated. Vitamin C is needed for vitamin D conversion. And there was a study that was published in the journal Nutrition that found this to be pretty darn interesting. They found that vitamin C influences an enzyme known as 1,25-D3 hydroxylase. This is the enzyme that converts vitamin D into its usable form. So without vitamin C, we don't have the enzyme that allows vitamin D to be utilized in its actual active form. Holy cow. So they took 10 subjects and they identified that their serum levels of vitamin D3 went up quite significantly if they took in vitamin C. How about them apples? So vitamin C is required for vitamin D and then vitamin D is required to mobilize the immune system and then the immune system needs vitamin C again. So you see how they kind of work together, right? So vitamin C isn't really worth the, well, orange that you're getting it out of without vitamin D. But now things get even crazier. Okay, so we know vitamin C is important. We know that we need to make sure we're getting vitamin D, but in order to convert vitamin D once again and actually metabolize it, we need magnesium. When we convert vitamin D, we deplete our magnesium stores. And guess what? We're already depleted in magnesium. 
Okay, a large percentage of people, at least in the Western world, are very, very depleted in magnesium because our soil is depleted in it. It's involved in 400 different enzymatic processes. It is a cofactor for so many things. The converting enzymes just can't do their job without magnesium. So magnesium is drained and used up when we're converting vitamin D. However, it's required for vitamin D. So you see the problem here, right? So we need magnesium, then we need vitamin D, then we need vitamin C. And it's all this chain reaction. In fact, it's kind of funny when you look at some patients that are given vitamin D via their doctors, right? They tell them to take vitamin D and then they measure their blood levels. They find their vitamin D never went up. Well, what's happening there? They're taking a vitamin D supplement, but their vitamin D levels aren't rising because they're deficient in magnesium. So the vitamin D they're taking in isn't doing diddly squat because it doesn't have the cofactor to actually allow the enzymes to be there to allow that vitamin D to become usable. We need magnesium as the underlying mineral for all of this to happen, for our immune system to truly work. I would usually recommend probably between four and 800 milligrams of magnesium per day. I'll go ahead and put a link down below to my favorite magnesium as well. The next piece we have to talk about operates kind of a parallel, which is zinc. We know that zinc is important for the immune system, but a lot of us don't really know why. It's not that it helps the immune system per se, it's that it keeps the immune system and inflammation kind of in check. So Ohio State did some interesting stuff, and this is where we all kind of got this information. So what it looks like is when you get sick, you have inflammation that occurs. Well, inflammation signals the expression at a genetic level of a zinc transporter. If that doesn't prove that we need zinc when we're sick, I don't know what does. That we have a natural genetic process to automatically create a zinc transporter the moment that our body recognizes sickness or inflammation. So it's the job of that zinc transporter to bring the zinc into the cell to help control the inflammation a little bit more. A lot of the issues that we face when we're sick are just, well, quite honestly, collateral damage from inflammation. We get sick, we have inflammation that comes in and causes a big problem, and then the collateral damage from the inflammation causes a bigger problem, i.e. things like pneumonia, things like that, right? That's a big problem. Well, zinc somehow interferes with what's called nuclear factor kappa B. It interferes with the process so we don't have too much inflammation. So that the inflammation is corralled to where it should be and doesn't go crazy running through our body causing other secondary issues and potential co-infections. It's pretty cool stuff. Zinc really is much more powerful than we think. So between those four, we've got the perfect little harmony. Now as an added side note, and I'll just mention this for a second, B vitamins like B6 and B12 are also very, very, very important, primarily because they build antibodies. So don't neglect your B vitamins, but quite frankly, unless you're really poor with your diet, you're probably still getting B vitamins in and probably not much of a need to supplement with them. So vitamin C, vitamin D, magnesium, and zinc. That is how you bolster and support your own inherent immune system. See you tomorrow.